In the 1950s, a lot of nuclear tests were conducted to determine the survivability of military equipment in the event of nuclear war with the Soviet Union. For Britain and the Commonwealth, one of the best places to let off atomic bombs was Australia, with its vast land mass and tiny population. In the deserts of South Australia was the Woomera test range. It was quite literally the back of beyond. In October 1953, a series of tests were conducted by the British called Operation Totem. A year earlier, Britain had detonated its own first atomic bomb out in the Montebello Islands in the Pacific, and the British government was keen that they should not fall behind the Americans in the atomic weapons race. The main purpose of Totem was to discover the acceptable limit on the amount of plutonium-240 which could be present in a bomb, as Britain could only produce limited quantities of weapons-grade plutonium at the time. The British settled on a test site known as Emu Field, an isolated dry, flat clay and sandstone expanse 480 kilometres northwest of Woomera. A base and airstrip was set up and the Australian Army placed in charge. It was decided that, as well as conducting all the usual scientific tests, a test would be made of the survivability of a tank. The obvious candidate was one of the new Centurion Mark III main battle tanks, developed in 1948 and then in service with the British and Australian armies. Centurion 169041 was selected. It was almost new, having been sold to Australia in 1952. The question was how to get the tank to Emu Field. It was too heavy to be flown in to the airstrip. Initially, the tank went by train. Then it was transferred to a trailer that was the same weight as the Centurion. The trailer could barely cope. For several hundred miles, the trailer hauled the tank, and then the tank turned around and hauled the trailer through the roughest country. 170 miles from the test range, the trailer was abandoned, and the Centurion drove under its own power. On arrival, the Centurion was prepped. The tank was then positioned only 350 yards, or 320 metres, from the epicentre of the nuclear blast. That is very close indeed. The scientists fully expected that the nearly new tank would be destroyed in the forthcoming test. It was fully loaded with main gun ammunition, a series of sensors, and a crew of mannequins. On the 15th of October 1953, the Centurion's engine and auxiliary generator were switched on, all systems switched on, and the hatches firmly closed. The Totem-1 bomb was then detonated with an explosive force of nearly 10 kilotons. By comparison, the Hiroshima bomb, dropped on Japan in August 1945, was around 18 kilotons. A huge mushroom cloud rose into the clear sky up to 15,000 feet, or 4,600 meters, with a tight fallout pattern in the immediate vicinity because of low wind speeds. So what became of the Centurion? Was it destroyed by the blast, melted by heat, or turned to dust? Well, in fact, the sturdy Centurion, only 350 yards from the epicenter, merely rolled back five feet on its tracks. The side skirts that covered the tracks were torn off, landing around 30 feet behind the tank. Some of the outside plating was bent or dented, and any small pieces of equipment, such as the radio aerial, were torn away. All the hatches were blown open, and any part of the tank facing the blast was sandblasted. The engines had stopped, but only because they had run out of fuel. It was determined that the crew would have been killed by the nuclear shockwave, but the Centurion itself was essentially undamaged. Incredibly, three days later, the radioactive tank was driven to Woomera by a crew. Only on arrival at Woomera was the tank actually decontaminated using a fire hose. So what became of the Centurion? Incredibly, it remained in service. A new engine was installed and it was upgraded to the Mark V version. Then in 1968, the Centurion went to war. A squadron of Centurions served in the Vietnam War as part of Australia's contribution. And in 1969, the tank was hit by a rocket-propelled grenade 
injuring the crew, but the Centurion kept going. Returned to Australia, it ended its days as a gate guardian of the 1st Armoured Regiment at Robertson Barracks, Northern Territory. It is still on guard today and known appropriately as the Atomic Tank. Many thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also support my channel via PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.